before we proceed to the download links, we need to verify that our computer is actually supported. So open the file manager or it can be file explorer, whatever. Right click this PC, click on properties. You can see here, system type x64 based processor. If this says x86 or x32, this process will not work. However, if you have a USB flash drive, then even if this says x86, you'll be able to run Trek Rain Linux. So my USB flash drive tutorial will be in the description down below. If you have a 32-bit computer, but you also don't have a USB flash drive, you're going to have to pray that Check Rain Windows supports 32-bit. It probably won't. Tough luck, not my problem, I guess. All right, on the Windows computer, it's very simple. We only need one tool. This is Wubi. Essentially, this completely bypasses the requirement to have a USB flash drive, CD, whatever. So scroll down and you'll see wubi.exe. Click on this. And at the bottom left, as long as you're using Chrome, you'll see the download right here. Click on it, and you'll see it. Windows protected your PC. Click on more info, click on run anyway, and then click on the yes pop-up. This is a completely safe tool. While in post-editing, you can see that the Wubi thing just didn't show up. So I'll show you what to do with a camera. So you'll have this Wubi installer right here. Essentially, the installation drive, you want to make sure this is your main hard drive. Then installation size, you want to set this to 14 gigabyte. 10 gigabyte is required to install Linux. 4 gigabyte is just for check rain files. Now we see here passwords. We're just going to make this 1111. All right, this is an easy to remember password. Remember, you'll need to use this password later for installing check rain. Then we just do 1111 again. And when we click on enter, we will see that Wubi will start installing. You can see it won't take that long. For me, it only takes 20 seconds. There we go. We can see completing the Wubi setup wizard. Now we need to restart our computer. That is the next step. You can see Wubi just didn't show up on the post editor, but hopefully you can actually see what to do. So next step is select reboot now, then click on the finish button right here. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart the computer and essentially, you will see a screen which says, please press something key to enter BIOS. You need to press that key. For you, it might be different for what I see on my screen. Mine will show F2. However, yours might show something completely different. So you see here, press delete or F2. If you have another key, then you need to press that. Then it says, I need to press F1 again. And now we should be entered into BIOS. If you see absolutely no key on your computer, then here's the solution. Go into Google, search up your computer model, then search up how to enter BIOS onto that computer. This is only required if you're struggling to enter BIOS or no pop-up shows up to press a key to enter into BIOS. Now my BIOS has a graphical user interface. So you can see it's nice and pretty. However, yours might not. However, the important part is you want to find where the boot menu is. If you're struggling to find this menu, then what you need to do is you need to look up your computer model, then look up how to find the boot menu. So we're going to click on this like so. You can see it says Wubi. We're going to click on the Wubi button and it should boot us into Ubuntu. But it doesn't because look, we have here verification failed, security violation. So we click on OK and essentially What's this going to do is it's going to boot us back into Windows. So we're going to forcefully shut down the computer. And here is how to circumvent secure boot if you're having this issue on your computer. First step, restart your computer. And we need to enter into BIOS again. So that means proceeding with the exact same steps as earlier on in this video. So any moment now, we'll see the F2. Now in BIOS, we're going to have to change one setting. So click on advanced mode. And you want to find where your boot settings are. Of course, for you, this might be found in a different area. Scroll down and you see here, secure boot. Click on this. And essentially, if you have the option to disable secure boot, you can see it says secure boot state enabled. If you have the option to disable this, disable it. However, I do not because when I try and click on the enable button, I cannot disable it. What I can do instead 
As you see OS type, it says Windows UEFI. I'm going to change this to Other OS. Only do this if Secure Boot cannot be turned off. If you turn off Secure Boot, then you don't need to turn it back on when booting into Windows. However, if you change OS type to Other OS, when booting into Windows, you need to change this back to Windows UEFI. So I'm going to click on Easy Mode, and we're just essentially going to save these settings. So you can see, it says Save and Reset. We're going to save these settings like so. Now our computer will restart. Even if you change Secure Boot to Off, you also do need to restart your computer. The next steps is you will need to go back into BIOS for the third time, hopefully the final time for this entire tutorial. Now we click on Boot Menu, and we're going to enter into Wubai. And now this time, it should completely work without fail. So you can see here, it says completing Ubuntu installation. So we just need to be patient for this entire process to complete. So now it says go back to the menu or resume partitioning. We're just going to click on continue. And you can see Ubuntu will start installing successfully. So we just need to be patient for all the copying files and all that good stuff. And then it should be done. So I'm actually going to zoom out. You can see the full window. Okay, now the computer restarted. So we're going to need to enter BIOS again. And this time we just need to boot off you know, Ubuntu again. Then we'll be able to run the CheckRain application finally. So again, we need to find Boot Menu. Click on that, and we find Wubai, we click on this, and this time we should be brought into Linux. So you can see here, we have this brand new menu, and what you want to do is you just click on the Enter key for Ubuntu, and you should be booted up into Ubuntu. I'm just going to speed this process up. Now you can see our username is right here, we click on this, and remember that password we made earlier? We're going to enter it, mine was 1111, we click on the Enter key. And we should be signed in to Ubuntu. Now the next steps will take a bit of time, but follow me. Now in Linux, we have this thing right here, which says, what's new in Linux, blah, blah, blah. So we click on next. Uh, we'll just click on next, next, done. Now the first step is we need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So here's what we're going to do. You see the applications button right here. Click on this. And then at the top, you see search, you want to search up for settings. And because we've actually installed Ubuntu, everything loads up like so much faster. So in the settings right here, it should bring you to the Wi-Fi. And you just want to connect to your Wi-Fi network. So type in the password like so. And of course, I remember this off by heart. Because why wouldn't you remember a Wi-Fi password for no reason? Anyway, there you go, as you see, it is connected successfully. If for some reason, no Wi-Fi network show up, here's what happened. Essentially, your Wi-Fi card on your computer doesn't support Linux. The option is buy an external Wi-Fi card USB. You can go on eBay to like five pounds maximum, or tether your internet connection from your phone to your computer, that will also work. The next step is we're gonna open up Firefox. Now the Firefox window loaded up. I'm going to load up the CheckRain official website, which is checkra.in. Click on enter. And any moment now, CheckRain should load up. And this is the only reason why we actually need internet. So we click on get the beta now, like so. And you see Linux, we click on this. And you can see here, we have commands that we need to enter. But how do we enter them? We're going to find the applications folder. And we're going to open up terminal like so we're going to open terminal and you can see right here the terminal is here we're just going to copy all these commands so copy from echo to the end of the list right click copy right click paste enter now we'll ask for your password and when you're entering the passcode it's not going to show you've actually typed it in you need to type this in blindly minus one 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 so if i zoom out and you can see i enter in the one you can see it doesn't actually register that I've entered it in. So we've entered in the passcode, but look, it doesn't show anything. So just click on enter. Now you can see the first command has worked successfully. The next command is right here. So highlight from sudo to the end of key, 
right click, copy, right click, paste. Click on enter. Now this process will begin. If this process fails, because I've seen in the comment section, it's failed before when I was doing this tutorial, when I was using the Try Ubuntu, instead of actually installing it, it also failed. Here's what you want to do. Well, you can see it actually failed for us. You see, warning. Just press the up arrow key and it will show the command again. Click on enter and run this command until it works. You can see it's worked right here. Next, we're going to find it sudo apt update. Right click, copy, right click, paste. If any of the commands fail, all we need to do is rerun them until they work. Okay. So it seems the terminal's hanged. I mean, we done the commands but it's not actually doing anything so we're going to close out the terminal and we're just going to reload the terminal app so there we go terminal closed we'll open up the applications folder we'll open up terminal i mean i should have just waited but what's waiting anyway and we're just going to paste that exact same command into here and now we need to type in our passcode remember it's the exact same rule it's the passcode you set earlier you press the enter key for it to proceed so it says unable to get directory. So we run the command again. And this time you can see it should work. Instead of having could not get, instead it's actually working. So all we need to do is just we need to wait for this process to complete. Now we can see there are no errors. That is a good sign. Now next step is we need to actually install the CheckRain app. So go back to the same CheckRain Linux page as before. And what we're gonna do is you can see it, click on the download button right here on the page. If you cannot find it, then you can always type in this exact link right here. So we see it, download for Linux, CLI x86 underscore 64. We click on this. And any moment now, CheckRain will start downloading. You can see it's right here. Click on save file, and you can see CheckRain will download. Any moment now, the check crane will finish. So we're going to drag it onto our desktop, like so. And there we go. It's on our desktop. What's great is when we restart the computer, the processes we need to do are from this step. Let me repeat that. When you restart your Linux PC, the steps you need to do to re-jailbreak, because every single time you restart the phone, or whatever, you will need to re jailbreak your device. All we need to do is start from these steps. So we're going to open up the terminal application. We know how to do it. We press that and then we search in terminal, like so. I can focus that. There we go, terminal. And we need to enter in these commands. So cd capital D, so D E S K T O P. And then we click on enter now we're going to do ch mod and we're going to do plus x check rain like so uh, make sure there are no caps in that sentence then oh, for crying out loud i typed it in wrong if you type in something wrong just press the up key now we can fix it there we go now we're going to do sudo dot slash check rain and there we go now we type in our passcode and any moment now hallelujah if someone copyright claims me for that i'm going to go literally insane because you know that's how youtube works in 2020 essentially what we're going to do is we're going to click on the options key and you see here you need to use the arrow keys to navigate so let me show you something I press the up button so you can see currently we're here we press the up button and now you can see we're here pressing it again will change where we are pressing the enter key will select one of the options so where it shows verbose boot we're going to click on the enter key because it looks cool and then we see it allow untested ios slash ipad os slash tvos versions we're going to enable this this means we can jailbreak any ios firmware we want we're going to go back and essentially, we need to plug in our iPhone to the computer. So I'm going to do that right now. Now the phone is plugged in. Here's what we need to do. Open settings and we need to disable our passcode. Essentially, if you don't disable your passcode, the jailbreak will still 
work, but it would take like 20 attempts. In fact, passcode is actually turned off for this device. Well, that's stonks, but you need to turn off your passcode, disable your touch ID. Obviously, if you're running 12.4.5, and I'll just show you again, this is 12.4.5, then you will not need to worry about Face ID because this only released for the older iPhones. So I'm actually gonna put this phone over here. And you see here, we have the option to start this jailbreak. So you can see it says iPhone 6, connect to the normal mode. We're gonna click on start, and we're gonna click on next. Now the device will enter in recovery mode, you can see it right here. Do keep in mind, if this iPhone doesn't enter in recovery mode, you will need to restart the check rain application, replug in the iPhone, and repeat the entire process. But you can see, if it entered recovery mode, you should see this screen. Now we have this thing right here, which shows what we need to do. Follow these instructions, but I'll also show you what to do. Press and hold the side and home buttons together for four seconds. Release the side button, but keep holding the home button for 10 seconds. It's intuitive. And in fact, I need to rest the tripod on the table. So now I'm gonna click on start and essentially we need to follow the instructions. So, so once we see a black screen, we release and we just hold down the home button only. So we can see here, have I done it in time? For and there you go, it says device entered DFU mode successfully. Now the jailbreak process will start and you can see the verbo spoot. And this looks really cool, in my opinion. I mean, there it goes, baby. I mean, look, look how cool this is, man. You feel like you're the hacker man, but you know, you're just running a tool off the internet. <laughs> anyway, your device will boot and it should work successfully. As long as there is no passcode. If there is a passcode, you might get an error. If you do get any errors while running the jailbreak tool, which you might, I've seen in the comment section, here's the solution. First of all, use another USB port. Second of all, just try again and it will eventually work. So we can unlock the device. And check rain application should be on our iPhone. It also has shown here, all done, which means the jailbreak worked successfully. So for some reason, check rain loader isn't on this device. If I search up check rain, it should be coming up in search, but it isn't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for around one minute because sometimes I've done this jailbreak 50 times already, essentially, because of all these tutorials. Eventually, check rain application should show up. If it doesn't, we're just going to run the jailbreak tool again. So we'll count 10, 9, 5, 0, minus 1. This means we're just going to have to run the jailbreak tool again. Just as I say that, check rain application actually installed. So we're going to open it. And now we see a Sidia. If I can just focus this in, we tap on install. We tap on install. And now do not exit the loader application. We need to download Sidia and this will take some time. In fact, the install process has actually sped up, but it could take one minute, it could take an hour. We stay on this loader page. So there we go, Sidia has installed and we can open it up like so. Any moment now, it should load up and I'll show you that Sidia is fully working on, remember this is the iPhone 6, not the 6S, on iOS 12.4.5. So we go to the home page of Sidia, and there it is, the classic user interface. But you can see here, iPhone 7-2, iOS 12.4.5. So there you go, that's how to jailbreak the latest iOS 12.4.5. No flash drive was required. And also this works fully on the Windows computer. Peace out.